Hello, this is Aaron Hendricks from the Geeks On podcast, and guess what? It's Hobbit time. That's right, by the time you see this video, it's either a few days until the first Hobbit movie is out, or you have just seen it. Now, I'm actually really excited to see what Peter Jackson has done with the book. Unlike The Lord of the Rings, which he stuck to the details and tone of the original book, it seems that he will not be doing that in the case with The Hobbit. We'll see. But now you're all in a hobbity mood and you don't know what to do. How do you prepare for The Hobbit? Well, first, I'm obviously going to mention to read the book. I'm actually kind of surprised to see how many people have not read it. It's a short book written for children, so it's easy to fly through, unlike The Lord of the Rings. But let's move beyond that. If you want to get more in depth with reading, with, with understanding The Hobbit and, and the world of Middle Earth, you got to check out The Tolkien Professor. It's a website. Dr. Corey Olson is a professor in medieval literature, but also has a class in the works of Tolkien. He's recorded the courses and has released them in the form of podcasts over the years. He starts the whole thing out with The Hobbit. It really is amazing to listen to, so go download The Tolkien Professor. You can find it on iTunes. Still trying to figure out what the difference between orcs and goblins are, what Gandalf the Grey's true name is. Well, the internet is full of all this great information, but I want to point out one of the wikis called Lord of the Rings Wiki. Like most wikis, it's all about the community that's contributing, and this one seems to have a lot of activity. It's got tons of information, and featured on the front page right now is specific links to The Hobbit. Now video games. Listen, there have been zillions of video games out there about Middle Earth, and I'm not going to let you know list them all. I'm going to let you look them up yourself. But there are two games that just came out right now, recently, that are Lord of the, Ga uh, Lord of the Rings themed. One is called Lego Lord of the Rings. It's a game for younger, the younger crowd, but I bought it, and I'm actually really having fun with it. Not much of a challenge as far as video game difficulty, but there's lots to explore, zillions of unlockables, and I like to just see how they retell the Lord of the Rings in kind of Lego form. The other game is called Guardians of Middle Earth. The reason why I'm bringing this one up is because you can play for an hour or so for free on your PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and it's a digital download. You don't need to go to the store. So just try it out. It's free. You might as well. So let's talk about board games. Uh, again, there have been plenty of board games and card games made for The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit in the past, and a lot of them stink. I'm only going to talk about one of them today because I love this one, and you can still buy it. Uh, it's called The Lord of the Rings, the board game, and it's designed by Reiner Knizia. Now, every time a new Tolkien board game or card game comes out, it's called Lord of the Rings, so make sure you get the one designed by Reiner Knizia. It's a couple years old. This game plays between two and five players, ages 12 and up, and it's a cooperative game. In fact, it's one of the first cooperative games I ever played. Each player takes the role of one of the hobbits from the Fellowship, who have taken on the burden to destroy the evil Ring of Power. You know, the one ring that will show up at the end of this first Hobbit movie. As a group, you must travel the lands of Middle-earth through Rivendell, the Mines of Moria, battle at Helm's Deep, fight through Shelob's Lair, and finally climb to the top of Mount Doom, uh, in the lands of Mordor. Uh, on your turn, you simply play one of the friendship, traveling, hiding, or fighting cards you have in your hand to help the group travel through these dangerous lands. But after you've taken your turn, you must draw an event tile. Now, event tiles is where the evil Sauron rears his ugly head. Throwing conflict and obstacles at the group they must overcome, Sauron is constantly trying to attempt and recover the ring by corrupting the honest little hobbits. If at any time the player who holds the Ring of Power climbs the corruption track and meets the All-Eye of Sauron, he falls to the dark side, giving the ring up to the evil master enslaving all of Middle-earth, the players lose. But if somehow the players work together to fight off Sauron's forces, share the burden of carrying the ring, and even sacrificing themselves for the group, they might make it to Mount Doom and destroy the ring. This is the only way in which the players can actually win, and it can be a crazy adventure. I really love this game. It really feels like you're following the adventures of Frodo, Sam, and the Fellowship. The boards are beautiful, and I love the fact that it's a co-op game. Man, I totally want to play this right now. Okay, that's it for right now. Let's all go watch the movie and meet back here to talk about what we thought about it. All right? Thanks.